Hi, this is John from the Garmin Marine Team. Today we wanted to take a closer look at radar to help you get the best performance and understanding of these devices. Radar can literally be a lifesaver on a boat. It can help you see what's ahead of you on the water even when you can't. But if you're not familiar with the radar images and not sure how to use the radar, then it's not going to do you much good when you need it. So let's take a closer look at the radar screen and the main user controls to help you get the most of your radar the next time you head out on the boat. Just a quick word of caution, the radar outputs microwave energy. So make sure the area around the radar is clear and never look directly into the radar while it's transmitting as the eyes are the most susceptible part of the body. Okay, here we have a Garmin 7200 series display with a Garmin radar connected to it. We can tell the radar is connected to the unit because the radar button is populated on this screen. And you can also see this small radar icon on the top of the display. That indicates everything should be powered up, talking to each other, and ready to go. So touch the radar icon and you'll get a few options. The harbor and offshore options, dual range option if you have one of our new XHD open arrays, as well as sentry mode and radar overlay mode. The harbor option is your best choice for near shore or inshore use. We will automatically tune the radar to be most sensitive to targets inside two miles and tune the radar for calm water conditions. Conversely, the offshore option automatically tunes the radar to look for targets further out and assumes there'll be a moderate sea condition so it tunes out some of the sea clutter. Now you can always override these automatic settings and manually tune the radar to your heart's content, but we try to make it easy for you to get the best radar image with the fewest keystrokes. Dual range radar is an option with our latest series of XHD open array radars. Here, you can split the screen and zoom the radar in close on this side to see in great detail what is right around you while you zoom out and see the big picture on this side. Sentry mode is just an easy way to set up the radar for timed transmit that creates a transmit and standby cycle to conserve power. You can also enable a guard zone, which identifies a safe zone around your boat and sounds an alarm when a radar object enters that zone. Finally, the radar overlay mode. With this option, we start by showing you the GPS chart plotter screen and then lay the radar images right over the top of the charts. This can be a tremendously useful option as you get to see two screens at one time and quickly compare two sets of data. The yellow mass here on the chart indicates the shoreline, and the orange is the radar return right on top of its charted position. We have the chart showing us where the land should be, and the radar showing us where the land really is. That should give you a high degree of confidence in the data and give you a very clear indication of your position relative to that land. Or take a look here, the chart says a green buoy should be right here, but the radar return is showing the buoy here. Now we know the radar data is real time, so that must indicate the buoy has moved a little bit due to local conditions or currents. If you just look at the radar screen by itself, you can see lots of returns, but you really don't know if the return is from land or a storm cloud or an aircraft carrier. But when you overlay the radar onto the chart, you can really start to figure out, hey, that return must be from the land mass over there. And that radar returns crossing the water, that's gotta be a bridge. And I don't see anything on the chart around this target at maybe another boat. So the radar overlay option can be a really powerful tool that gives you two screens of information in one clear and concise image. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the radar screen itself, our 6000 and 7000 series displays when connected to our latest XHD open array radars are able to draw the strongest radar returns in red and the weaker returns in blue or yellow. This is a really quick way to distinguish between hard and soft targets. We can even change the foreground color and the background color so you can choose the color combination that works best for you. All right, so your boat is right in the center here and the bow of the boat is pointing right at the top of the screen right along this heading line. So any radar target right in front of the boat should show up along this heading line. Down at the bottom of the screen, you can see the radar range. In this case, half a mile. That means that the distance from your boat to the side of the screen is one half nautical mile distance. The white rings are range rings. You can see here they're one eighth of a nautical mile apart. 
These are really helpful in quickly gauging distance to another radar target. So one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths of a mile or half a mile away. If you wanna see a larger area with your radar, hit the minus button to zoom out. If you wanna see more detail, hit the plus button and you zoom in. Also at the bottom is an indicator that shows whether the radar is in heads up, north up, or course up mode. Just like our charts, heads up orients the screen so that whatever is in front of your boat is at the top of the screen. North up keeps north at the top of the screen and south at the bottom, while course up keeps your active route heading at the top of the screen. All of these red marks on the screen are radar targets. Here's the rub. There's really no way except through experience to determine what each target is. I mean, this big radar return here could be a big line of thunderstorms or the coastline. These small targets could be boats or buoys. They would look similar on your radar screen. Of course, the good news is, thanks to your radar, you know something is out there. And if it's big enough to show up as a return on your radar, it's big enough to cause damage to your boat, so stay clear. But that's why it's so important to use your radar and get familiar with all the settings before you need it. Turn your radar on every time you're out on the water and make sure you get a good feel for what other objects look like on your screen. That way, if you get in a situation where you have to rely on your radar, you'll be better able to interpret what you see on screen. And worth mentioning again is the radar chart overlay option. Overlaying the radar data onto the chart plotter screen may help you determine whether a radar target is a buoy or a boat if you can compare the GPS page to the radar page. Okay, so you're out on the water, you see a radar target on your screen, and you wanna see how far away that target is. Simply move your cursor over the target or with a touch screen, just touch the target. You get a data box that pops up to show you the target's lat long and its distance and bearing from you. You also get a few options, like if you wanna create a waypoint where that radar return is, touch here. That will drop a waypoint at that location and store the waypoint in your library for future use. Another great option is the acquire target option. For this, you'll need to have a high speed heading sensor, an electronic compass on the boat. Pick a target, select acquire target, and the radar will now track that target automatically as long as it stays on your radar screen. This is a fantastic safety option for tracking other boats in your area, and it's gonna notify you if a target gets inside your comfort zone. You can even set what your comfort zone is under the collision alarm menu. This is also a great feature if you're fishing with a few other boats or cruising with some other boats and you wanna keep an eye on them during the trip. The VRM EBL option allows you to place a variable range marker and an electronic bearing line on a target. This is great for taking your bearing and distance from a series of marks to fix your position on a chart. And finally, the measure distance option allows you to electronically measure the distance between you and any point or any two points on the radar screen. Okay, now that you're familiar with the radar screen images, let's get into the menu and show you some of the key settings that you can adjust as your conditions change. The first option is the gain setting. The Garmin unit will default to auto gain in an attempt to give you the best radar picture. If you wanna see more radar targets, increase the gain setting. Increase the gain setting too much though, and your screen will be completely cluttered with false returns from waves or other targets. Good rule of thumb here is if you wanna manually change the gain, slowly increase the gain. It may take a few seconds for the radar antenna to sweep around and show you the new settings. Until you start to see some light clutter on screen and then back it down just a hair. You can actually set the gain settings manually for every radar range. So at really close ranges, uh, inside two nautical miles, maybe you turn the gain down a little bit so you don't get clutter from a nearby wave. While at the longer ranges, you turn the gain up a bit so you have a better chance of seeing some marginal targets. But remember that Garmin offers the harbor and offshore radar modes, and we can do a lot of this tuning for you if you just leave it in auto gain and select between those two modes. Next item under the radar menu is noise rejection. Three options here, rain clutter, sea clutter, and crosstalk rejection. Turn the rain clutter up if you wanna to try to eliminate clutter caused by rainstorms and see a boat that's inside that rain cloud somewhere. 
C clutter has several presets for calm water, medium, and rough conditions, as well as manual settings. Waves can reflect that radar's energy back and show as false targets. By tuning the C clutter for your local conditions, you can eliminate many of those false returns. And finally, cross-talk rejection. If you have a lot of other boats in the area with their radars banging away, you can get lots of interference from those other radars. Turn on the cross-talk rejection if you see lots of clutter that you can't tune out using the other settings. All right, let's dive into the radar setup menu now and show you a few other user settings. We already talked about the radar's orientation, so let's go to the front of boat offset. You should only have to adjust this offset if the radar itself was physically mounted slightly offline. Try lining up the boat on a fixed radar target and compare the target's position against this heading line. If the target consistently appears on one side or the other of the heading line, you can dial in a few degrees of offset to align the target perfectly. The data bar option allows you to turn on or off or change the data that shows up in these four boxes in the corners, or you can add more data bars like fishing data, fuel burn data, sailing data like wind speed, and XM data if they're available. All right, one last menu to explore, the radar appearance option. We've already talked about changing the screen colors, so let's go directly to look ahead speed. As we said, your boat is located right in the center of the screen, so you can see your radar targets coming at you from all sides. But if you're a power boat going 30 knots, you may want to shift the radar so that you see further in front of you. Easy enough, set the look ahead speed to, let's say, 12 knots. So when you're going slow and radar targets could approach from anywhere, your boat is positioned in the center. When the GPS tells us that the boat has hit 12 knots, we will shift your boat's position to show more water in front of you and less behind you. Also, under Appearance, you can turn off the heading line and the range rings if you want. One great feature of Garmin's integrated GPS and radar is the ability to show GPS navigational information on the radar screen. So if you're actively navigating to a waypoint, you can see the magenta course line and waypoints on your radar screen. If for some reason this bugs you, you can turn them off here. Before we close, we wanted to show you a few more radar views that you might like. So far, we've demonstrated the full screen radar modes like harbor and offshore options, as well as the dual range option that shows you two radar ranges at once, if your radar is equipped to do this, as well as the radar chart overlay mode. Well, here are a few more options on how to view your radar. With the perspective 3D option, you get a three-dimensional rendering of the charts with a view from above and behind your boat. You can even change the angle of view with the plus and minus buttons here. If you touch menu and turn the surface radar on, we can show you the radar return right on this three-dimensional screen as well. Another option is the combination screen. Here you can create custom viewing screens with radar on one side and charts on the other, or sonar on one half and charts on the other half, or split the screen four ways and have radar, sonar, nav charts, and 3D charts all on the screen at the same time. If you want to see the radar full screen, simply touch that panel and it'll appear full screen. Hit stop pointing and you're back to your custom combination screen. So you should have a better understanding of what you're seeing on your radar screen, how to change the user settings like gain and clutter, to respond to local conditions, and how to change the several different radar views to suit your tastes. If you have any more questions about Garmin Marine Radar or any other Garmin products, go to garmin.com forward slash marine or ask any one of our authorized installing dealers. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the water.